Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ed Hope, an emergency medicine doctor in the UK. And on this channel, we diagnose and break down the injuries from the best fight scenes in the business in our rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis. Today, hot off the press, we have a scene from James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Nothing like a bloodbath to start the day. It's out in the cinemas now, so go support the movie. It's freaking awesome. And then pop back here and we'll have some fun breaking down those injuries. Three, two, one, fight. <laughs> well, that is our first shark attack in a fight scene. Ordinarily in shark attacks, you think traumatic amputation of limbs, blood loss, drowning, whereas this one is more of a dude getting completely eaten alive, and he probably is alive. Sure, he gets a chomp to the chest as he goes down, so he may have some rib fractures and deep lacerations, but probably what's gonna kill him is suffocating in the belly of that shark, compounded by exhaustion of trying to get out. That's more like it, right up our street, this one. Axe to the forehead, so penetrating injury with skull fracture and traumatic brain injury. That is one sharp knife to cause a complete traumatic amputation of the arm. You need significant pressure to be able to stop that bleeding, so ideally a tourniquet, and that needs to be on pretty pronto because this guy could easily die from hemorrhagic shock, so bleeding out within a few minutes. It doesn't matter so much though because we get a deep neck laceration, so that's going to transect the arteries and the veins that supply and drain your head, and also not forgetting your trachea to your windpipe. On its own, that would be enough to kill you from being unable to breathe. So all in all, this dude's in pretty bad shape. Penetrating arrow trauma to instantly render someone unconscious like we see here. We're gonna have to hit the brain directly or disrupt the blood supply to the brain via the neck or rupturing the ventricles of the heart by going through the chest wall. All of which are potentially survivable, but judging by the things around, it's gonna be a while before medical attention arrives. <sighs> Strangulation from a steel wire. Pretty nasty, this one. Not that any of the other injuries have been particularly nice. Depends how long the force is applied to know the exact trauma here. An air choke would be crushing the windpipe and would take a couple of minutes to render someone unconscious, basically how long you can hold your breath for. But a blood choke, so compressing the carotid arteries, would only take a few seconds to knock you out. And then you'd have to continue to compress those arteries to kill someone. However, if the ligation is super tight, which I've got a feeling it is, the wire can cut through the tissues like a cheese wire, and then we get a risk of transection of the windpipe or the blood vessels, which, as we said earlier, can kill you from being unable to breathe or hemorrhagic shock. Peacemaker with another penetrating neck trauma. It's peaceful in a way because this dude is never gonna wake up again. What the actual frick? I think you need a butcher to break down this one, not a doctor. The strikes to the leg, as long as the femoral arteries more towards the inside of the leg remain intact, that would be pretty survivable. The abdominal trauma could be more of an issue, but actually it doesn't look too deep, so probably would just rupture the muscles of the abdominal wall, although you have to rule out damage to the underlying bowel, so just bleeding or perforation. And where the ax gets left in, we could be looking at a laceration to the liver. The liver is basically just a big bag of blood, so significant rupture can be fatal. And the penetrating trauma is also close to the diaphragm and the lungs. All in all, this person has a good chance of pulling through, although multiple injuries, you get compound interest. So once he's stabilized, we'd need to do imaging with bedside ultrasound and a CT scan to rule out any of those deep injuries that we talked about. Multiple facial fractures and traumatic brain injuries. The first dude, probably gets a nice nasal fracture, and then a moment later, a right zygomatic arch fracture. 
his friend gets a zygomaxillary complex fracture, and the last dude, a left orbital blowout fracture. All of these would need MaxVac surgeons to prevent any long-term deformity or disability, such as problems moving the eye or jaw. Before all this though, you'd have to rule out any intracranial bleed, so a bleed around the brain that can be life-threatening, and for that we'd do a CT. And even if they don't have a bleed, you could easily have bruising around the brain tissue, what we call contusion, that can cause long-term disability. Three people get darts in the neck. <laughs> this is a bit of a movie cliche. The poison here works way too quickly. We'll assume it's a paralytic drug as the chemical used in poison darts back in the day was curare, one that blocks the nerve signals at your muscles, rendering you paralyzed. We often use a similar drug today in hospital alongside an induction agent when we need to intubate someone in an emergency although the effects usually take around a minute to kick in, even when injected directly into the vein. And what we see here is more of a subcutaneous or intramuscular delivery. So it would take a lot, lot longer to knock someone out, maybe several minutes. Unless, of course, he's managed to fire it directly into a blood vessel, which he'd not only need to have a lot of skill, which of course he does because he's a superhero, but he'd need to be very lucky too given the natural variability in us all. Either way, once knocked out, they are in a lot of trouble because they'll be unable to breathe for themselves because their diaphragm is going to be knocked out. So without someone bagging them or a reversal agent, they're going to be dead within minutes. Oh my. God, okay, so widespread burns, one of the most horrendous injuries you're gonna see in terms of pain and complications. This guy has got the right idea about jumping in the river. Just a quick assessment here, we're probably looking at around 95% surface area of burns, so in the region of 75% mortality from things like breathing problems, from burns and swelling to the airways and lungs, sepsis from bacterial infection due to loss of the skin barrier, fluid losses leading to severe dehydration and kidney failure, and hypothermia. So despite being on fire, as soon as those flames have gone, you've lost your skin barrier, so your natural protection to retain your heat so you can get cold very, very quickly. And this person also gets a shot in the head. That's not gonna help. Oof, gunshot wound to the cardiac box probably going straight through the sternum and shattering it, but most concerning would be if this bullet has penetrated the heart and ruptured the ventricles or the blood vessels around the heart. That's gonna be almost certainly fatal. <laughs> so I thought it was going for a headshot there and missed, but electric shock in the bathtub without a micro circuit breaker That'll probably be his last bath. Although the overt feature is muscle convulsions and deep burns, it would be putting your heart into an arrhythmia that could be fatal, or if the current goes through the brain and causes a burn, although it doesn't look like that would happen in this case. Also, if I know the internet, someone is gonna say electric appliances in the bath don't necessarily kill you, which is right because the current would flow through the water as it's more conductive than the human body. But if you look at the electric fan here, it goes onto him, so the fan will be conducting through him into the bath, so we get an electric shot that way. Non lethal, you lose. Gunshot wound to the left shoulder, always with penetrating trauma, you worry about bleeding. But specifically in this case, you also have a concern for a fracture of the humeral head or if the bullet fragments, you can get foreign bodies in the joint and soft tissues that will need to be removed. Exploding compression bullets. No, that's a show off. Okay. Scratch that, this dude is now completely ripped apart from a primary blast injury.
<laughs> there we see what we've all been waiting for, the deadly polka dots in action. Very dangerous mechanism here, falling from two stories or six meters. You'd expect multiple injuries from that height and potentially life-threatening injuries too. So traumatic brain injuries, spinal injuries, so you'd have to immobilize people at the scene to prevent long-term paralysis. Chest trauma, so rib fractures and underlying punctured lungs or bleeds around the lung. Injury to the heart, such as cardiac tamponade. Abdominal trauma, either bleeding or rupture to organs. And as with all trauma, hemorrhagic shock from bleeding from long bone fractures or pelvic fractures. As you can see, lots of potential life-threatening injuries and all over the body. So we'd need to be assessing these patients in teams using a structured approach like ATLS to make sure we deal with things in priority order and make sure we don't miss anything. He does throw polka dots at people. And now for the kill count, we have none in stable condition, three in serious condition, 11 in critical condition, and eight dead at the scene. No one likes to show off. So there you have it. I think for the sheer variety of injuries, this has to be my favorite fight scene to date. Electric shocks, exploding bullets, eaten by a shark. Anyway, if there are any other fight scenes you want me to check out, then leave a comment below and I'll take a look. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a like, share it with your friends, give that subscribe button a bit of blunt force trauma. And until next time, try not to get embroiled in any fight scenes yourself and I'll see you soon.